Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome back. Uh, we're on question number 16. That's the one we're going to be handling in this video. Question 16 of the 2002 Cayley competition, put out by the fine folks at Waterloo University. Question 16 says, if the product of four consecutive positive integers is uh, 358,800, then the sum of these four integers is... Okay, so we have some possibilities here. Some of uh, four integers could be 102, 98, and so on. Uh, it might be a good idea to work out what these four integers are. We know they're consecutive positive integers, so we could maybe call the lowest one n. Okay? So our integers could be n, n plus 1, n plus 2, and n plus 3. And so in the end, we're looking for the sum of them. So that'll be uh, 4n plus 6. That's something we're looking for. And uh, that actually would help us rule out some of these possible answers. If we know the final answer is going to be of the form 4n plus 6, then we can rule out all of these numbers here that are not of the form 4n plus 6. Which is... Oh, none of them. They're all of the form 4n plus 6. Okay, that was... It would have been useful if had this been a different question. Oh, well. So, might be a good idea to work these out. We know something about them already. We know what their product is. It's going to be 358800. And that actually looks a lot, very suspiciously, like... Um, uh, what number am I thinking of? Looks suspiciously like uh, the 9 factorial, 10 factorial, that sort of number. Uh, anyway, uh, the first thing I would do is I would say, well, these numbers are so close to each other that if I were to fourth root this number, I'm not going to get an integer, no. But I'm going to get a number that's basically the same as these. I mean, think about it. If I do... Uh, 3 times 4 times 5, that's going to be very close to 4 cubed. And this turns out, turns out to be 60. 4 cubed is 64. So if I fourth root this, I might get some possible values. Or I might get, get close to the possible values. So I'm going to try that first on my calculator. I've got my calculator. They're allowed, so why not use them? So... These numbers here, they should be in the neighborhood of the fourth root of this fella. And I'm getting that that is about 24.4. So my instincts tell me that I should be looking at maybe, say, 23, 24, 25, and 26. That's my first guess. Might have to go a little lower, might have to go a little higher. Well, that's my first guess. Uh, the reason I'm trying to do it this way rather than, I mean, I've got a definite equation up here. I could expand it out and try and solve it, but I'm going to get a quartic over here. I'm going to get n to the 4 plus yada, yada, yada. That's not going to be a nice thing to solve, especially with this large uh, 358,800 over there. So I try and shortcut it and say, well, it, they're probably all going to be around 24. Let's try these four consecutive numbers here. Uh, my thinking is that the fourth root should basically be about the middle number. So I place 24.4 in the middle. I get 23, 24, 25, 26. To know that these are the numbers, uh, they would need to multiply out to this. So I'm just going to grab my calculator and check. 23 times 24 times 25 times 26. And wouldn't you know it, it works out exactly. I was thinking I might be off by one in some direction, but it worked out perfectly fine. Uh, another thing that probably could have given us a bit of a hint is, um, just before I finish off the question, I know I have to add these numbers. Another way I just thought of to approach this one is, here are some factors of this number. How about we actually work out what the factors of this number are? I'm noticing that I've got some 
twos in here. So two, and then I'll have, um, so let's divide this sucker by two. 179400. The reason I, I don't think this would be uh, as good is because it's going to take a little while. I'm specifically prime factoring it. 89700, that's also going to have a 2. Four four eight five zero. That's also going to have a factor of two. Two two four two five. I know, and then a twenty five. So that's going to have a factor of at least twenty five. Four four eight five. That's going to have another one. Eight nine seven. And unfortunately, 897 doesn't, I can't factor that easily. But, uh, oh, it's uh, 789, so it's going to have a 3 in there. 897 divided by 3. I get 299. And that, it'll be, I think, 13 times 23, but that's because I already know the answer. 13 and 23. I wouldn't immediately suspect that 299 is prime because that would mean that one of these has to have a factor of 299 and that's impossible for numbers where four of them add up to 102 for example. So I know 299 is gonna have a, a factor there and having this 23 here one of these has to have a factor of 23 because it's prime and I'm guessing that it's gonna have be the sole factor uh, it's going to be the only factor, so one of these numbers has to be 23. So I would just try, well, 23 near a multiple of 13. Another one of the numbers is going to have to be 26. So it should be a number. And then we start thinking of multiples of 13 near 23. That should be 26. Well, those are exactly two numbers apart. So that gives me a run of four consecutive numbers. I just double check. Oh, there's 25 right here. And then uh, three, uh, one of the twos is taken by 13 to make 26. Three times two times two times two, 24. We get the numbers that we want in the end. So that's another way of doing it, just by factoring it. I think just this fourth root method is better, but whatever you did, that's fine. We're asked for the sum of these four numbers. So without further delay, let's get to it. Uh, 24 plus 26, that's going to be 50, plus another 25, that's going to be 75, uh, plus 23, so that's 95, plus 3, so that's going to be 98. And the calculator will hopefully confirm this. Yep, 98. I think that was B, wasn't it? Yep, B. So that does it for question number 16. I'm actually going to leave this second method here. Not like we really come back to these, but there we go. Those are perfectly good ways of doing it. And uh, question number 17, I can't help but read a double single number digit. A double single number is a three-digit number. That sounds interesting, but we'll have to look at that next time.